All right, guys, so we're inside of DaVinci Resolve. So what I'm gonna do is I've rendered out all my files. I got everything ready to go and, and we're gonna comp it together. So what I did here is here's my it, my plate, my original plate, and it make sure it's at 30 FPS because I had an issue for some reason somewhere in the pipeline. I didn't change it and it was 24 FPS when I brought it in. So I'm gonna show you how I was able to fix this problem here. And that's why I'm saying it's important to maintain your settings all the way across the whole pipeline. So here in DaVinci, let me go back how I had it. This was the issue. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this file out, brought in my plate. Here is my plate there. And I right click on it, go to clip attributes, and it says, it says 24 FPS. This should be 30. I set it to 30 FPS, hit OK. And then it reds out here, like it gets all crazy, right? So what I do is just delete that, right? Make sure on our timeline, here we're working on timeline number six, I'm gonna right click my timeline settings, make sure this is also set to 30 FPS, okay? Boom, 30 FPS. Let's drag in our new clip here, that which should be 30 FPS. Same thing, I'm gonna go make sure these are my, my CG and my shadows are the same. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to clip attributes, Make sure that is set to 30 FPS. Yes, it is. All right, and I'm gonna also right click on this, right click and clip attributes, 24, change that to 30 FPS, hit okay. Now I'm gonna grab my shadow and I'm gonna just drag it on. Boom, there it is. There's my shadow layer. Now that the length is matching, I think it's one frame over, that's no problem. And then I'm gonna grab my next one, drag it on top. Actually, let's just drag it there. Let me drag it on top. Scroll this down so we can see. And boom, there it is. Those are all lining up now. So now we got all of our stuff lined up and it's tracking. Good. And it looks like I have one extra frame on the CG versus, yeah. So we can, that's no problem. We'll just go ahead and clip that and clip that. Now there's another thing I wanted to fix, like the Olympic file. So what I want to do is I want to start that after the Olympic file, like once it gets set. So right about here and i'm going to probably drop that there and i'm going to go ahead and select these and i'm going to delete this front part off and just trim it right so we got something like that so it's all ready to go now i need to fix my color space issue because these are super dark and like they're not matching so what i'm going to do click i'm going to select all of these right click and select new comp new fusion comp I'm gonna name this here quickly because I got a couple other ones here. Now I'm gonna click on the Fusion tab down here. Boom, now we're inside of Fusion and we're all ready to start comping this out. I like to work vertical, like, because that's how they do it in Nuke and it's just a good practice to, to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag all of these here like that. And I'm gonna drag this one here on the top. And then these two, I'm gonna drag them so they're straight, okay? I'm gonna rename this. This is going to be our plate. Hit F12, this is the plate our background plate, or you could even just go BG underscore plate. And this one here is our shadow. So I'm gonna hit F2, okay? And then this one's gonna be CG stuff. So I'm just gonna go RGBA because that's what I would need to name it if I, it's a habit I used to use Nuke so that it, it needs to be an RGBA coming out of Blender so it will show up in Nuke. So I just keep, I just kept that going. All right, good. So we got everything here ready. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up my desktop a little bit. I don't need to see that on the side there. Here is my screen. Now, what I want is to fix my color space because I use linear. Now, there is, uh, if you press shift, uh, shift space bar, I think it was called color transform. Where is it? Here it is. Color transform space right here. You're going to add one of those on here. Boom. And if, you, if it's not selected, if you don't have the nose selected and it just pops up in the middle, you just click on it, hold down shift. And when you see the colors change, that's when you know it's gonna connect and then boom, it's connected, right? I also have a preset of this saved already. So like you'll see sometimes me just dragging stuff down, like over here, I already have a preset. So I would just drag that on here, hold shift, boom, there it is. Now I wanna change my color space so we can get this proper. I wanna go uh, import gamma was, my gamma was linear because I was doing EXRs. There it is, right? And then everything else is all ready to go. It's already set to the use timeline, which my timeline here, if I click on the wrench and I go to color management, timeline space, rec 709, which is standard for TV and basically everything that's non Hollywood cinematic movie, <laughs> right? So we're good there. So now I got my color space proper. I need to do the same for my shadow, but I'm just gonna copy this one, control C, click on the node, press control V. 
Boom. There it is, right? Now what we're gonna do is just kind of match our levels a little bit here. I've already kind of dialed in the look, but what I typically tend to do is I'll grab a color curve, drag it onto what I want, and there it is. And what I wanna do here first, I'm gonna adjust my black points, my black shadows and my white points. So I want my blacks of the CG to match the blacks of my footage or get close as possible. Now, my playback is set to quarter, that the resolution looks a little bit off. See, there's full resolution. It's just so I can work a little bit faster, right? Uh, I'll do it for the sake of this. We'll leave it on full. Open up two. And then here, what I want to do is see my RGBA. I want to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to press one, and that's going to put that over here. And then uh, my output, which is right here, I'm going to push two. So there it is. Here's my output on this screen here. I want to match my CG a little bit better. I want to match these blacks. So what I tend to do is go and turn on, oh, it's over here on this side, this histogram and then hit this little arrow and I want to go to color inspector. Now it's just going to bring up a little color thing. So here on the video, I can scroll over and see the blacks. Like here, I, it shows me my black. And it's like basically a little bit, it's clipping, it's in the negatives. 0 0.79 for red, green, and blue. So what I do is I take these values and just kind of get an average. So I'm looking at the red is like 0 0.07, green is 0 0.06, and blue is 0 0.07. So what I would do is go to my curve. Now we're going to uncheck all of these, leave red. I'm going to click on the bottom here because this re represents shadows. This represents highlights. I'm going to click right there. And what I'm going to do is just kind of zoom in here a little bit closer so I can see this. And again, you just find somewhere that's black, that's like the shadows are kind of like representing what's going on. And I'm gonna say something like here, I'm actually probably gonna go a little bit more around here. Okay, something that's not totally clipped out because of Rec 709 can't hold all that data. So I'm gonna go like here in this shadow here. And it's looking like we're at zero point, I like to write these numbers down just so I don't have to remember them. Uh, zero, zero point four is it zero, zero point four. And then I have a uh, green is going to be zero point zero two. And then the blue is going to be point zero, zero three, three, six, I can go three, six. And this is just going to help me to kind of get my blacks matching wise. So what I'll do is I know red was around, like I said, point zero, zero four, one. I'll come in here and go point zero, zero four, one. Okay, like that. And then we also need to make sure we do pre multiply divide because it's going to do it to the whole image. This is only going to click that. Now it's only going to do it to the CG. Now I'm going to go to uncheck that, check the blue. The blue is at 0 to 1. So what I'll do here, again, click this bottom one. And actually, I did it wrong. I did it backwards. We should be on the out. On the out should go 0 0.021. There we go. Let me go back to the red and correct that. The red was wrong. I did the wrong value. It shouldn't be on, it should be out. So go back to zero and then just put it in over here, 0 0.0041. Okay. And then let's go uncheck that. Let's go to the green. And the green was 0, 0 0.36. Okay. So I'm going to click on the green, 0 0.0036. Right. Now this is just kind of get me in the ballpark. It's not going to be exact science, but it's just going to, it's better than just trying to eyeball it. Okay. So that's it for my blacks. And now I want to do the opposite. I'm going to go to my highlights. Okay. And I'm going to go click on the top point. So what we'll do for the highlights is I'm going to look for something that's really white that I can, uh, in the background, like this sky is completely blown out. Right. Which is actually a good probably reference for our highlights here. Like see here. Here our vial is showing it's at 0 0.7, 0 0.78, 0 0.71. And then if I go to the sky, it's one. It's actually clipping, right? So let's just take those values. One, I'm going to go ahead and write those values down also. And now I repeat the thing, the whole process again. So let's, that's cool. So that basically got our white points and our black points color-wise trying to match as close as possible. And that's a, it's getting there. It's, it's a little bit better than nothing, right? So from here, what I'll also do, I'll copy this and paste it onto the shadow. So let's work on the shadows. We'll actually kind of get these shadows to match a little bit better here also. Now I can see there's not a lot of shadows going on in this shot. 
as far as the way the sun's positioning was. So I don't have like a good reference. So what I did was just, it was more, I remember in the scene, the sun was literally almost more straight up and it was very diffuse because it was super cloudy day. So the shadows were really hard to see. You know what? There's something not, not looking right here. I'm not sure. I think this might be floating in the air. This back here. Okay. There, there's a shadow there. It's, it's there. This is, must be floating in the air right in front of me. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and drag on a color corrector. And on here, this is going to be, again, go to the options, make sure we're on pre-multiply divide. So it only affects just the shadows. And let's grab the lift and crank it up. There it is. Now we can see, see what's happening. There's our shadows, right? We know our shadows are there. So if I darken them all the way down, it's too much. What I'm going to do is, if anything, maybe just bring them down just a little bit. Nothing too much again. And then what I'm going to do is add a blur node just to blur that shadow out. I'm gonna leave that at stock. Then next, I'm gonna come back down to my RGB layer, RGBA layer, add a color correct on that also. If you, again, if you select the node and then tap on that, it's gonna put it automatically connected in front. And what I wanna do on this layer here, and what I think, another trick that I learned from the Nuke guys, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the bottom of my stream. This is the output, the final, final part of the chain. All these are the background node and all the green ones are the foreground, which is gonna be proper. I'm going to add another color correct, <clears throat> tab it. This should put it at the bottom of the line and actually put it up past it. So let me just deselect that, hold shift, drop it in there. I, mean, I normally work with two monitors, so this is very cramping for me. I'm going to go ahead and grab the gamma and I'm going to crank up the gamma. And actually, I'm going to go like to five, type it in five. Okay. And what I'm trying to do is break it. Now you can see how black the blacks are compared to my CG. So I want to try to match that, like with it being overexposed. I'm gonna to go to six just to really show this. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my color correct on the shadow layer. There it is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab my lift and bring that. Oh, that's sorry, that's the shadows. Hang on, yeah. Let's see what the shadows are looking like. Shadows. I guess I could bring them down just a little bit. Not too much. Nothing too much. It should be blown out. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna go into the color correct on the RGB, color correct two right here. Let's go ahead and pull that lift down. All right, now we can see what we're working with there. Okay, we want that to be like maybe there a little bit and also make sure pre-multiply divide is turned on. Now there, because it was affecting the whole image and that's how I knew that was happening. And again, on the lift, I'm just trying to get right here like, see how here it's black and it's completely clipped out. I'm just trying to get maybe this area here to be like that. And let me just. And you can see how blue, I think the blue tones are a little bit too heavy on our. Maybe something like that. All right, that's looking kind of in the ballpark. Now, what I'm going to do, go back to that bottom one here and let's go ahead and reset this. All right, good. So that's our blacks. Now let's go ahead and what I'm going to do, reverse that. Now we're going to do that with the highlights. So again, I'm going to go to gain up, crank it up. I'm going to go like six, really crank it up. And let's see, is it really matching with this pretty much here? I think it looks good. That doesn't look too bad. Let's go to the color correct. And then again, if we go to gain, if I go to gain, see, I can bring that down. I bring that up. But we want to try to get it to be blown out like everything else is blown out. Kind of something like that, I think. We'll see. Now let's come back down here to our color correct and restore it back to normal. Okay. So already that helps out a lot as far as trying to get this to really sit inside there. Well, another thing that I like to do to really make sure my levels look kind of close, let's go back to the curve. And for example, I'll click on this right here and you select it and go to R. It's just gonna show the red colors. So now I can kind of see like how things are matching. Again, with my black points here with the CG, uh, again, we were sitting at seven, one, seven, one, seven, three, roughly. Come over here to the black point on this, on the video, nine, that's a little bit, nine, it's a little bit darker, more clipped out. Again, that's clipped out dark. So I, I could go a little bit darker, but, I'm going to leave it where it's at. I think we're kind of close enough in the ballpark. So now what I'm going to do, just to, we need to add some imperfections to this. I'm going to slide all this over here. Let's slide this over. Give us some more space. I need to add some imperfections. 
What I'm also gonna do is click here, click on that node. I'm gonna add a blur node in here too. I'm gonna leave it at stock just so it breaks up this edge a little bit. See, see how our, our footage is a little bit, actually, we probably don't need this blur on this one. Let me go ahead and zero it out. Yeah, you know what? I think it's gonna be okay uh, because I set the depth of field up on the camera inside. So we'll go ahead and delete that. I think we'll be okay. Let's look around here. CG is looking okay, good. Now I'm gonna add some noise to it. What I'm gonna do here is go to spacebar, shift spacebar. I'm gonna go film and film grain. Here it is. And just add a little bit of noise to the footage, to the CG. Okay, now you can see this is clearly not matching. It's like way too small, right? So let's just kind of make it a little bit bigger. Slide this up, kind of slide that up a little bit more bigger. And that's too big. It's just kind of trying to find the splotchiness of the grain. Maybe go back to the size there and maybe let's just pull down the strength. Pull down the strength. Yeah, let's just pull down the strength and just creep it in ever so. I'm just trying to knock off that smoothness a little bit just to try to match the grain of the video. Okay, good, that's looking okay there. Then what I'm going to do, and you know what? Hang on really quickly. Let me just see if I put a color transform space on this. And our video was also linear. Let me go back and change that. Hang on. Just to make sure that it's okay. Linear. Okay, yeah. You know what? There it is. That kind of screwed us. <laughs> That's back to what it should be. It was looking a little too dark. Now, unfortunately, the levels are set up for the other way around. So we're going to have to fix the levels real quickly again, which is not a big deal. 